G'day, my name's Brett, and welcome to my basement. If you're uh, someone who dabbles with electronics, you're probably familiar with a breadboard. Uh, we use them to prototype electronics. Uh, you might also be familiar with jumper wires. Come in various lengths, and they have these pins on the end that you can easily stick into the board and connect things together. Those sort of jumper wires tend to suck a little bit. They loop up off the board, they can easily catch on things, they uh, make a bit of a rat's nest, so it's not really easy at a glance to see what's connected to what, and they can be a little bit of a pain to work in around once you get lots of them plugged in. So a while ago, I uh, came across a YouTube channel by the name of uh, Ben Eater. It's a pretty cool channel. Uh, ben makes a lot of uh, 80s era computer electronics and, and uh, peripherals on breadboards and uh, he uses jumpers kind of like these ones. Now this is a kit that I bought, um, well mostly. You can buy kits like this, they're, they're pretty easy to find. You have various lengths, um, but the problem with these sort of kits is you only have specific lengths and only you know a fixed number of them and inevitably you run into one of two problems either I need more of this particular length or I need one that's 13 holes long and I don't have one so Ben makes his own he even made a video about how he makes his uh, his jumpers and I liked it but uh, I sort of came away from that video thinking, mm, could I do better? So here's a tool that I designed. It's roughly a triangular shaped lump of plastic with a bunch of grooves across the front that uh, progressively get longer. There's also one groove across here, across all the other grooves. Um, there's a couple of notches on the side and some holes in the end. So how do we use it? Well, let's say we wanted to replace this with something a little tidier looking. So we start off with some uh, 22 or 24 gauge solid copper wire, um, preferably with some PVC insulation. I find that is the best. This length from that ground bus line to this ground bus line is 18 holes. So I can just count across here and we go these are in groups of five, so 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I lay my wire in that groove. Side cutters, I cut it off nice and flush to the end. Now, these notches in the end, that's for our wire stripping gauge. The holes are half cut away because I have these uh, bypass style wire strippers. So that still allows me to lay one blade of the stripper on the end here to get a nice accurate strip. So we just stick that in the hole. We uh, grab the wire with the wire strippers and then strip. Do the same on the other side. Grab and strip. So now we have our two ends stripped to the right length. We stick it in the hole. We bend it a nice 90 degree angle. Then same with the other end. And there we have our nice new jumper. Bend that a bit more. So we can pull that out and put this guy in its place. Nice. Okay, next we'll try and uh, replace this other ground one. It's uh, going from the Arduino's ground pin to this ground bus line. So that is a distance of three holes. So we'll try the same thing. We'll go here to the third groove. We will get our side cutters and cut it off flush. We'll stick it in the notch here and we'll grab and strip but we're about to run into a problem 
if you look here, the amount of insulation I want to remove is actually more than the amount of insulation I'm trying to keep. So that's going to be problematic to start with. You're just as likely to uh, pull off the insulation you want to keep. But additionally, this short little piece of wire is just so hard to get a good grip on. Maybe with some different wire strippers that bite a bit deeper into the insulation might have been fine. So there is a better way. There's two notches here. You'll see there's a short notch, long notch. So what we do is we uh, stick the wire straight off the spool into the long notch. And then we strip that. Now we take our stripped wire we put that into the third groove. Oops. There we go. Okay. Stick it in here. Slide the insulation down. And then we bend. Oops. Missed the hole. And there we have our little jumper. Put that one in there. We'll do the same again with this one. That's a distance of four holes, so we'll try the same thing. We'll stick it in the long stripping gauge. to the fourth groove, cut it flush, slide the insulation down, it's a little harder to slide and that's sort of the limiting factor with this technique is it works pretty well for short jumpers but uh, once you get more than about four or five holes in length it starts to get a bit too hard to slide the insulation down so and once they get that long it's uh, easy to do the other way. So we'll take that one out and we'll put in our jumper here. Now I have a bunch of uh, jumpers that I made earlier, so we'll uh, start to replace some of these other ones with those. The uh, red one. Kind of hard to work around these, so I'll just pull them all out. But here's where I'm about to run into another problem. So I need four of these uh, white jumpers here, uh, but I only have three. Or, actually I don't, because we're on like take five. But, uh, you know, let's pretend that I don't have them. Or let's pretend that I have this jumper, which is the right length, but it's black. And I want a white one, because color coordination is important, of course. So, how do we do that? Well, we could count across here and figure out how long the jumper needs to be, or we could lay this out on the, the breadboard and try and figure out how long this is, and then you know do the same thing and count, cut, all of that sort of stuff. But there's a quicker way. If I have a jumper that I already know is the right length, that's what this groove across here is for. I can lay the jumper on here and just move across until I find the place where it matches from this point to the end. So that's the groove. That is the right groove to make a matching jumper for that length. So I just put my uh, wire in there. I cut it. I strip Strip the other end. And then of course the bend and bend. 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 And there's my matching jumper. And that's the same length.
And there we are done. The board's nice and neat and tidy. We can easily see what's connected to what. We don't have any loops of wire coming up off the board to get caught on stuff. I do have a 3D model of this. It's available in Thingiverse. Um, I'll have a link in the description if you want to uh, 3D print your own. If you come up with any improvements to the design, I'd love to see them, so let me know. Thanks for the view. Uh, if you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If uh, you want to see more like this, then subscribe, and maybe I'll see you again making stuff in my basement. Bye.